Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living with Dementia. We're proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. Some of our programs are recorded and some are made available for viewing through our YouTube channel for future use. I am Martha Brown, your host for today's activities. As always, Peggy Spear is with us from the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art on Wednesdays. Yay! Today she is bringing us the ever-present landscape, and these will be pieces of art that we haven't seen lately. Uh, Peggy, it's all yours for landscape. Here you go. All right, let's get to it. All right. So full honesty, I opened up my PowerPoint this morning and there was not one artwork in it. So I, um, <laughs> we're kind of winging it right now. Okay. I was laughing, my coworker, my office mate next door, I was like, well, uh, I've got 12 minutes and I have no PowerPoint slides. So what, what, you we expect the, the PowerPoint elves to do it for you overnight or something? No, well, I... I think just having three kids has broken my brain in a way that I didn't know it was going to break my brain. Yeah. And um, I I make all of this PowerPoints at the beginning of the month, but so I made them all, I just didn't drop the artwork in, which meant oh, no. research anything. So, mm. um, but what I'm bringing you are, we've got a lot of color today. These are all on view right now in that um, museum and these are almost always on view. So these are some masterpieces that um, are near and dear to our heart here at the Carter and art history lovers alike. So without further ado, we're gonna start here with Thomas Cole. We, um, we have looked at Thomas Cole in the past. He, um, he created Hudson, um, Hudson Valley School for painting. And so that is a very particular style of landscape that um, was really known for kind of its, uh, the glory of the landscape, the, the, this insane lighting, kind of this hyper-realistic depiction of the world, of the environment, and particularly in the United States. He, this is like one of the first American art movements um, that we have, and it's credited to Thomas Cole, the Hudson, Hudson Valley School of, of River School of um, Painting. So we're, we're seeing very particular hallmarks that um, he eventually developed and got better at doing over time, which then influenced all of the other artists we're gonna see for after this particular painting. So Garden of Eden, what, what do we know about Garden of Eden? Oh, it's uh, where, uh... Where, where God created earth, right? Yeah, this is where, do we see, if you look closely, we've got- I do, see, Adam, I see two people. Adam and Eve. Oh. They, do appear, they, they do appear to be naked. They are. So we've got and some, some accuracy based on the Genesis uh, book we're referencing. Um, the oh, people awesome. are in there. We oh, Go ahead, what do you see, Martha? I'm just saying, oh my goodness, they're so tiny. Yeah. Even, even with my cheat. So, okay, I'm glad you said that because I'm gonna click. Are, are you seeing this go to a website? Website. It's yeah, okay, it didn't. All right, I'm gonna unshare and share because this is a Google, um, a Google stop, um, Google Pixel, which is really cool. It allows us to um, zoom all. Hold on. Woo! Where am I? You're talking no about okay, I was on my actual slideshow. I'm gonna um, share the Google. Uh, this is really cool. So I can zoom in. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Google. Um, we have 37 artworks in our collection that are Google Pixel that allow oh, to now zoom I can in see them. Oh an my insane amount. So I can even zoom in closer. I see that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So here we've got Adam and Eve. But first looking at the picture, I thought it was a photo that someone had taken. It was so beautiful. Very beautiful. That for sure. Um, when you see this in person, it's a rather large um, 
painting. It's 38 by 52 inches. So wow. much larger wow. than a photo. And so on the screen, it, it feels, these feel really small. Even in the galleries, these people feel very small on the canvas. Mm -hmm. But you can see um, almost these like gemstones. That's what I was going to say. Those look like, uh, look like, like uh, things you would see in the garden, just the uh, raw gemstones laying around. Crystals. Yeah. Your string of rubies and yeah. sapphires, Crystals. your typical garden mm -hmm. decor. Yep. But you and <laughs> that, that one plant looks like aloe vera. It probably was. So down there is the bottom by the rock? Oh, down here? No, There's more than one. Over. Oh, yeah, over. The other uh, 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 behind the waterfall. The, uh, here. Yeah, by the here? waterfall. Up here? My, no, yes. Down, down. Yeah. In the I corner. Can't. Bring your corner up. It's out you mean here out you mean right by the no. right by the the oddly shaped, shaped pyramid kind of rock yeah uh, well no it's it's in the left hand well my left hand owner well, well we've got a lot of vegetation happening here so it, yes. it might be I, we could play this game of i spy all day with this <laughs> because i mean look at it the further there I it is the okay oh i see it i see, yeah. I see what you're talking it. about see, it's and... a big plant right yeah. there uh, on oh. the left side of the of the waterfall there right here. yeah and that big one there too uh, over here peggy okay, yeah if you if i were the artist Mm -hmm. How tall are these people that he painted? Are they maybe an inch? Um, uh, no, I think they're a little bit bigger than that, but I can't. Okay. I mean, they're so tiny. They are like an, almost feel like an afterthought in this. Um, right. In this painting. I, you know, I don't know the exact measurement of them, okay. but they're, you, um, you, when you walk up to this artwork, you notice the landscape before you notice anything. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Immediately. And so, and that was his point. He wanted to um, focus on the, the, the holiness of the land because this is so, I mean, it's just, Lush. God's creation is just so insane. And so yeah. we're focusing, we're he's telling a story about this landscape, but he's using the story of, Gen of Adam and Eve as the, right. the backdrop. So he did, he painted this um, in 1928, and I'm going to read what he wrote um, to a friend in 1927. It says 1828 on the picture. I mean, yeah, eight, I'm sorry, 1828. Sorry, I have another PowerPoint on in my background. Um, let me pull up the art for the PowerPoint now. So we're so uh, so I don't recall in the in the Genesis story that there was jewels. Right, laying around in, in the no, rivers. and that that's those artists being artists again. He I know <laughs> probably added it just because we as people identify gems as something that's beautiful, and yeah. so it's like equating this royalness yeah. and regalness and and value with something that we would people hold value to as well. So landscape. <clears throat> um, we take. I mean, I don't know where in the U.S. you would find something quite like this. <laughs> so it's definitely imagined, but um, this was the beginning of something that now then he became very hyper focused on on U.S. Um, landscape. So this is what he wrote though to his friend: "The Garden of Eden is the subject. The scene as it exists in my mind's eye is very beautiful. If I had time, I should indulge myself in attempting to describe the scene I have imagined, but can now only say that there are in it lofty, distant mountains." a calm expanse of lake, wooded bays, rocky areas, a solitary island, undulating grounds, a me meandering river, groups of noble trees of various kinds, banks of beauty as flowers, fruits, harmless and graceful animals, et cetera, et cetera. So we see all of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is this a, the lake is out there by the waterfall in the background, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. We've got the meandering river. This is the kind of river. waterfall yep. creek. We've got all of the beautiful vegetation. We see some animals. We see birds, as you saw when we zoomed in. We're kind of hidden in these yeah, colorful I see, yeah. vegetation. 
but this he painted too. He painted the Garden of Eden and he ex uh, painted the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. These were hung right side by side and um, neither of them sold, but he was still, uh, there were people who were wanting to support his artwork um, monetarily. So he then, this kind of launched him into uh, what his career then looked like. He was, he loved telling stories <coughs> to the landscape, which he realized he could do now. And he loved telling things in serial. So we knew we, this is the Garden of Eden. And then he did the expulsion of, of Adam and Eve. So we were seeing he continued to do this type of um, the telling of a story through landscapes throughout his career. So um, this is good old Thomas Cole, distinctive American art, which influenced then the other artists we're going to see, mm -hmm. like John Frederick uh, Kenzie. That was a real treasure. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's stunning when you see it on the wall. It's one of those things you look at it every time you notice something different. Oh, that's the best uh, painter I've ever seen. Cole? Yeah. You are, you are in a popular thought, uh, man, because there are a lot of people who love Cole. So he is. Oh, gosh, I do. <laughs> we'll add you to the list. We'll call the official Cole fan club and say, we got that's one right. more. We got Neil Lawrence on it. All right, so now we're we're switching um, gears to a place that's very real, um, and it is this coast of Beverly. It is located in uh, on the Newport coast, which is about twenty five miles north of Boston, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And this is a subject that uh, Kenzit painted. I think there's like something between twenty and thirty paintings of this exact area. <laughs> And so this uh, artwork for reference is 13, uh, 18 by 30 inches. So it's more panoramic. Um, and he was just really, this was something he came to over and again. One, it was a really popular spot for Boston, Bostonians to come and spend a day, vacation in the area up on the, that coast. Um, but he was really interested in the lighting and different times of year and different times of day. And um, he kept returning here and it was something, he was not going the route of uh, a lot of uh, landscape painters where they're heading to the Western part of the United States or they're heading tropical. He was really interested in the New England landscape because it was something that was familiar and just as beautiful in its own way. So here we see um, this particular post. Do you notice the the sailboats? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I counted seven boats in the background. All right. Let's see. One, two. No, there's two over there. Two over here. One there. Yeah. There's the white one, and then one to the left. There. Okay. There's two there. Go over to the right. There's one right there. Three. Go to the right, four, five, there's one on the right, six, and then the seven to the right. I agree. Yeah. There, and this might even be, I don't know, this one might be number eight. Yeah, there might be one just right there. I just, it's a little faint. Yeah. Whoa. That's the faintest yeah, I mean, of all. It looks like a hazy day. And there are other pictures yeah. where it's a very bright and sunny day and people are pulling a canoe mm -hmm. into the water. I mean, that's. It, you can see just if you think of any natural place you go to on different days, different times of day, different times of year, how different uh, that looks. And this could, this to me has a more fallish feel to mm -hmm. it, less mm -hmm. of a summery yeah. feel, but does ever, does anyone else feel differently? Nope. Yeah. And if any of you have been to New England in the fall or grew up in New England, you know that there's kind of just that cloud, gray cloud from October to March. Um, it's just the way it is up north, especially that on the water. Lovely. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to go. Very calm. Very mm -hmm. calm. Yes. Yeah, we can see just it's lap, just lapping, not turbulent or anything like that. Um, and and his vantage point is kind of interesting. So he seems to be elevated a little bit. He's not standing on the beach there's you know we're kind of looking down which means the horizon line has to drop because of what his vantage point is and so because there's so much sky 
it feels very open and vast. You don't feel this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like you're in a kind of dramatic scene, like Steve was saying, you know, it still feels really calm. And part of that is because there's such a vastness of the sky. So this is another um, a beautiful one that is currently on view. And so this is a, one of his drawings. So this is, he was really well known for his oil from 18, basically 1845 on. He was uh, only making landscapes from 1840s when he decided I wanna do landscapes. He then traveled to Europe for a, a extended stay and went to Paris and London and Italy and Germany and Switzerland and with a couple other artists. And um, this is one of his sketches from that time when he was abroad. And it feels, you can feel almost the immediacy to this sketch. It's, it's graphite, it's pencil on paper. So, I mean, if any of you have, you know, traveled by train or gone someplace and you're just kind of doodling on your en route, like this has that kind of feel to it to me. Yeah, I do just don't look anything like that. No, 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 no. Mine are like stick figures of like people on a triangle. That would be like my mountain scene. His, yes. his is not bad. But I mean, if you just can notice how simple some of the movements are, this is the kind of stuff that gets me jazzed. It's like, you can actually see the artist's hands. You can see where the pencil mm -hmm. is hitting the paper and leaving the paper. And you can kind of get it, a, a, my a, a glimpse in his mind of how he's mapping out this landscape to then eventually paint it to look like something like this, which is so wild. So, yeah. so uh, 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 Peggy, yeah, do you think he was actually doing this while he was on a train? Because those lines look pretty nice for being on a train while it's moving. It might, you know, it, it was he did it while he was abroad. So I don't know okay. if he was moving. I don't know if he was that back, you know, where he was staying at night and then reflecting. Okay. okay. Um, but he, this is on a five by nine piece of paper, which is a perfect sketchbook size. Mm. So there, there is that immediacy to it um, because he's just moving through. Whether he, you know, I don't, I don't know if he was camping at this okay. of his journey, but yeah, there's so, I don't know exactly when it was, but it was done. It wasn't done years later when he was thinking about it. Mm -hmm. To me, it looks as if the lines, okay. yeah, to me, it looks as if the lines, it's not single lines, it's all, they are continuing in it's the, in the trees. Yeah, I mean, like, you can kind of see it up this mountain. Yeah, but and also the trees. The trees. That it looks scribble. as if all the lines, they, they go together. It yep. looks, they're not separate lines. No, I mean, yeah. working yeah. quickly to create that brush look of the, the needles. Mm -hmm. And even down here, you can see these are almost like squ squiggle, like squir uh, curly cues that he's doing to add maybe some texture for dirt or, or moss or grass. I mean, there's a, even with just the lining, you can tell there's little movements within these lines that he's creating to add that rocky craggedness of these mountain lines. It's so simple and so beautiful. I just, I loved it. So, so Peggy, did he sell these sort of things? I don't believe, I want to say, no, this did not sell. This was like, I think, artist sketching just for him and his, and his okay. creativity. Um, I want to say like this particular one, if I'm remembering correctly, this was like at RISD for a while and then it was in a different museum. So this, some of these, these masterworks have it were immediately either bought or taken by museum or on yeah. a bit in um, big fairs for the public to consume. This has more of a private um, consumption. So on that cove scene from Be at Be Beach at Beverly, uh -huh. I, I, I looked up on the internet real quick and it shows different versions of this picture. Yeah. It's several different, like there's big waves and there's uh, other things going on, different ships and stuff like that. Yeah. So I mean, he, he, he likes this picture. He likes this place. He really does. It's in between, um, it's called Curtis Point and Mingo Beach. This is like a the specific, specific little cove within the um the Beverly Coast, which is north, you know, in New England or in Massachusetts. Um yeah, I I you know how like if you've made maybe in your life found like 
a really good hiking trail or like a really good beach that's kind of like your secret family beach. I feel like this was kind of that, even though yeah. it's a really popular place. Um, he oh, he returned here between 20 and 30, or there are 20 and 30 paintings from this particular spot. So he found, he picked his favorite beach and continued to go there. So, so what you say is between uh, Curtis Point and what? And Mingo Beach. Mingo. M-I-N-G-O. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, um, so we're gonna, we're gonna, this is our last painting. Yes. Couldn't find much about this painting, but it's one, it's again, another follower of Cole. He was in the, um, the Hudson, um, what is it? The Hudson River School, not Hudson Valley, Hudson River School. And so he, again, he's at this vantage point that feels higher. So we're seeing that vast sky. Mm -hmm. it, do, it's a, it doesn't look like a breezy day to me. I don't know. Do you, does anyone feel like it looks particularly breezy or not? Um, no, but the flag is sticking up. Flag is, the flag, flag is sticking out. And the smoke is... The, the waves are kind of... Uh, Sprays a little bit of spray on the waves. Yeah, you're right. There, you yes. guys pointed out exactly the 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 few things that might indicate. I mean, like the, the front <laughs> oh, don't yeah. look like it's breathing, but there are some white caps on the waves. That's a yep. really good call out, Yetta, with this with this smoke, and then or the steam, and then um, the flag. And other than that, it doesn't look like any, you know, we don't have much of things blowing. It doesn't feel like sand could be blowing or anything like that. At least you're not seeing that. Yeah. Oh, and um, that's Rhode Island. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, Rhode Island. I mean, there are so many paintings uh, with these landscapes that are New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Maine. This is just artists, playground for landscape. I mean, mm -hmm. e there are a lot of these artists were living in either New York City or um, Philly or Boston. So it was easy to get to these vacation spots um, or if they weren't already living basically there. A lot of um, artists had studios on coastline or summered in these artist colonies. And so I don't think this was an artist colony, but this was a, a Rhode Island had so many different has so many different coastlines and beach towns that it was easy to kind of hop till you found a place that felt like where you wanted to be. And I don't okay. think any of the people are in the water. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't look like it, at least from our point of view now. I, I can't see anybody in the shoreline. I mean, we just see people sitting along the edge. We see a little right. ski over here. This might be a uh, spring. But isn't the water always cold up there? It is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, you probably don't want to get in. I mean, maybe June it starts warming up. June, July, August, September is when it's warm enough to get in. And then outside of that, it's like polar plunge every single time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely spring with all the pretty flowers. Yeah. It, it, it does have a very spring feel to it. I like yeah, we've got that kind of the depth of the like we saw with um with Kenzit. We're we're seeing that depth perception where they're hazing and things that are, you know, we see a, a totally blue boat. That's just because of how of indicating that depth. We're seeing here too that blue sailboat that's totally yep. washed out. I mean, this is like employing uh different tried and true perspective uh, techniques to really create that depth, which again is creating that vastness um, for the viewer. I'm so oh, glad. House. Can, can you center on that house? This, I'm no, sorry. this, I don't believe this is one of our Google Pixel ones. So I can't zoom in the way I could with the, uh, the first one. The Google Pixel team came in or the Google Arts and Culture team came in, this was years ago with their camera we would took, take things off the wall and have it in our photo studio and they would go through picture move over an inch take a picture move over an inch take a picture and it took i oh. want to say it was like maybe seven or ten days that google team was here and took all these pictures of um, wow i want to say i think it's 37 artwork so not 
this is not one of them. We really tried to go for like our, our masterpieces. So the, the more famous artworks in our collection are the ones that got that Google Pixel. Now, so Peggy, I can I can make it bigger just by using my fingers. Yeah, you I you yeah. can, I cannot do that on my end, but yeah, do what Yetta is doing, uh, Nan, and just kind of pinch. Well, it. yeah, I've done that, but the problem is with my eyes right now, it's just blurry. Oh, well, I can't help you there, sister. <laughs> so, so uh, Nan, what was your question about the house? Huh? You had a question about the house. Oh, I was wondering what all is around it because I, I. I think uh, it's kind of just like a beach stones. stack or like a little, I mean, we've got a, a stone wall that leads up yep. to and runs along. Right. It's like uh, you've got like a little uh, is handrail it, or like entryway. Is right it here. two pieces? It's, it's either two pieces or like two pieces there, houses very close to each other or one house with like an addition to another. And I can only imagine how cute and cozy and cottagey that place yeah. feels inside. Yes. So I, I wonder if this is something like a, a bathhouse or someplace where they can change their clothes or something. Ah, oh. that's a really good thought. It could very much be. That would be Men nice. and women. I'm so grateful that we have these great works to look at, Peggy, and we appreciate you so much. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, this was a, I, once I got my act together, I, was, I haven't looked at these paintings in a long time, so I'm glad we could all enjoy them together because they're really very beautiful. And this particular oh. one is, where is my note? It's uh, 25 by 38 inches, so it's it's a decent size. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is pretty good. Yeah. Yes, you definitely picked some good ones for us. Yeah, no, these are and good. I like only them. one black and white. I couldn't help myself, but I thought it was really <laughs> cool. Oh, hey, that's that's okay. that's, that's probably Got what he considered scribbling. I know, and that to me would take me like twelve weeks and a lot of erasing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mine would be orange from the eraser. <laughs> I love great artists. Yes, holes in the paper where you know where the paper starts to like thread through or thin through. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys, next week abstract so again abstract. we've got more than enough to look at um i promise you i will come prepared next week um but yeah that will we'll be looking at some i'll, I'll deliberately pick colorful ones because it's yeah it's you're gonna miss abstract next week are you sure you can't uh, join in who me what yes. yeah oh well i may be joining in yes <laughs> <laughs> depends on how far ahead i am with everything okay well i, I hope to see you yetta Thank you, Peggy. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. Right, bye, Thank Peggy. You, Peggy.